According to one of my previous videos, trains never speed. So why was one particular driver doing 100 miles an hour over the limit? Welcome to Dad Brown. Hello and welcome to this Dad Rail video with me, Richard. If this is the first video you've seen by me, then I'm a freight train driver, former passenger train driver based in the south of England. As always, all the views and opinions expressed in this video are purely my own and may not reflect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with. So you may have seen the news headline, um, a story about a Great Western Railway service travelling at nearly 100 miles an hour over the speed limit. Yes, you heard me right, 100 miles an hour over the limit. But whilst the headline is true, as with every other shocking headline, there is a story behind it and there's reasons why it happened and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. For the sake of completeness, I was not involved in the incident at all um, and all my facts come from the uh, RAIB Railway Investigation Branch Report uh, and that is all available on their website and I will link to that uh, in the description below. So let's look firstly at what happened. On the 12th of August 2020 at around 1607, a Great Western Railway service from London to Bristol passed over a section of track in Dauncey in Wiltshire, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, travelling at 117 miles an hour. The normal line speed in this area is 125 miles an hour, but on the day in question, an emergency speed limit of just 20 miles an hour had been put into place on this particular section of track. Now there are several types of speed restrictions on the railway, um, but in order to kind of understand what's gone here, we need to focus on the three main types of speed restrictions. The first one of these is permanent speed restrictions, and as the name implies, these are permanent, they exist all the time, and they are indicated on the, the familiar um, board black letters on a white background in a red circle. You might see this reversed actually, you might see white letters on a black background, and if that's the case, the speed is indicated in kilometres an hour. These are not very common on the railway network, but you might see them around St Pancras, Ashford International, places where the uh, International Eurostar uh, trains run. Second type of restriction is known as a temporary speed restriction or TSR for short and these are planned and that's very important you need to remember t uh, temporary speed restrictions are planned restrictions and they're normally put into place after engineering works or for a number of, of other reasons. Because they're planned, they are published in a document known as the One, that's the Weekly Operating Notice. And this is a book issued to all train crew, normally issued um, electronically these days, but it's issued to all train crew and it gives details of temporary speed restrictions of engineering work, signals that have been moved and all details like that. Of course, not all drivers are great at reading their ones, not including myself in that, of course, and there is line side signage to remind drivers of temporary speed restrictions. So the first sign the driver will receive will be a warning board, temporary speed restriction warning board. This will be accompanied by an audible warning in the cab, that's an AWS horn for those of you who know about AWS, and this must be acknowledged by the driver. You've got, depending on the model of AWS, it's about 2.7 seconds to acknowledge it, otherwise there'll be a full emergency brake application on the train. They'll then follow a commencement board at the beginning of the speed restriction and then a termination board at the end of the restriction. Sometimes though, the work might get completed early and they need to um, lift the speed restriction, they need to end the speed restriction uh, before it's actually advertised to end, in which case the signage will be replaced with a spate board, spate uh, meaning speed previously advised terminated early. And the spate boards will remain there until the end date of the, the published restriction. The third type of restriction is known as an emergency speed restriction and these are put in place any time a speed restriction is required urgently. So it could be because of a, um, a track defect for example, a, a bridge strike, bridge collision, anything like that, any time they need to put an urgent speed restriction in. Due to the nature of emergency speed restrictions they are not published in the one and drivers rely on line side signage and notices posted at the depots. The signage that a driver is given is very similar to that of a temporary speed restriction but the driver receives an additional warning known as an emergency speed indicator or Dalek because of the way they look. The emergency speed indicator is um, provided approximately 200 yards before the speed warning board and again it comes with its own AWS magnet that the driver has to um, press and acknowledge. In this particular uh, incident the train was actually fitted with ATP advanced train protection but for the sake of simplicity it didn't pay, play a massive part in the incident so I'm not really going to go into it uh, in much detail in this video. Um, where an emergency speed restriction 
is in place for any length of time, for example, when track defects are gonna take time to repair, it will normally be published in the one and then converted to a temporary speed restriction. So it could be they find a track defect, they put an emergency speed restriction on it, then they've got to wait six months for parts to be made because this is the railway and that's how long things take. So in the meantime, that speed restriction will be published in the one and it'll be converted from an emergency into a temporary speed restriction. So I've simplified that quite a lot. There's a few more signs and stuff, but that's more for the, the rules based videos, but hopefully you're still with me. But we do need to add one more aspect to that. We need to add, add differential speeds. And differential speeds are applicable when you have two speeds that apply over the same section of track. And they are indicated as two separate speeds on the sign. Keeping it simple, the top speed, that's the lower number, applies to freight trains, and the bottom number, that's the highest speed, applies to passenger trains. A little bit more to it than that, but uh, we'll keep it simple. Um, differential speeds, as well as being permanent, can also apply to temporary and emergency speed restrictions. So let's recap. Firstly, temporary speed restrictions. Remember, this type of restriction is planned and published. The first thing the driver will see is the warning board, in this case for a 20 mile an hour temporary speed. It will be accompanied by an audible warning in the cab that must be acknowledged. The next board is the commencement board, where the speed restriction actually begins. And finally, the termination board where the restriction ends. Now let's look at emergency speeds. Remember, these are unplanned speeds and can be implemented without notice. Firstly, the driver will see the emergency speed indicator or Dalek. This is accompanied by an audible warning in the cab that must be cancelled. Next is the warning board, this time for a 30 over 125 speed, followed by the commencement and finally the termination board. The driver must wait until the whole train has passed this point before accelerating back to line speed. So on the 27th of June, about a month and a half before our incident, Network Rail had imposed an emergency speed restriction of 30 over 125 on the section of line at Dauncey. That's 30 for freight trains, 125 for passenger. The emergency speed indicator, the warning board, the commencement board and the termination board were all put into place correctly. The speed restriction was set up just as it should have been. But because of worsening track conditions caused by temperature of the rails and expansion and heat, that's a whole other video, on the afternoon of the 12th of August, track inspection staff posed an additional 20 mile an hour speed restriction on all trains over the section. So rather than having freight and passenger different, it's 20 for all trains. However, the speed limit signs were not updated. Now when the speed limit signs have not been updated, in accordance with the rule book, the signaller stops all trains before they travel over the section and they get told via the radio about the new restriction. Now this method of working continued until 1552 when staff confirmed that the line size signage had been updated to correctly indicate the new 20 mile an hour speed restriction. The first train over the section with the new restriction signage in place was the 1512 service from Paddington to Bristol Temple Meads. The driver for this train started his duty, I say his duty, her duty, at 1436 and noted the speed restriction notice in the depot for the speed at Dauncey. The notice however had not been updated. Now from my experiences, notices are not always kept perfectly up to date. Things change so rapidly on the network that you can't expect it to be perfect. Um, maybe an electronic notice board would help with this. Big ideas, people, if you're out there listening. But once you've left the depot, of course, to work your train, then it doesn't matter what's on the notice board. Um, you're purely relying on the signage that's out on the line because you're obviously you're not going to see it once you've left the depot. So now let's go back to our headline incident and put in the missing pieces and look at what's happened here and why. So we have knowledge of the speed restriction, but no knowledge that it had actually been changed 20 mile an hour for all trains. The driver set off on their journey from, from Paddington to Bristol. Now the driver had made this journey several times over the previous six weeks and had not needed to slow down for the restriction, being because it only applied to freight trains, this driver only drove passenger trains. On the day in question, the driver was approaching the emergency speed restriction at 125 miles an hour, which is line speed. They acknowledged the emergency speed warning board or the Dalek board and then spotted the 20 mile an hour speed warning board. Now at this point the brakes were momentarily applied and then released but 37 seconds later and over a mile later the driver spotted the 20 mile an hour commencement board and made a full service brake application reducing the train speed to 117 miles an hour before passing through the section. The driver then called the signaller to report that they believed some of the speed restriction signage was missing, believing that the 125 board had simply fallen off. Fortunately, in this incident, nobody was hurt and the track speed was actually returned to normal at 1907 on the same day. Now, in my professional opinion, having driven that section of the line so many times without needing to slow down for the restriction, the driver had become preconditioned to that way of driving. And it's really, really easy to do that. Think of when you drive a car on a familiar route. If a speed limit 
changed, say, a speed limit went from 30 to 20 overnight and one board had been changed. Can you guarantee 100% you would notice that without any other warning? It's very easy to become preconditioned to, to the way we do this. And also on the railway, speed boards falling off, unfortunately, isn't that uncommon. And the rule book actually mentions the need to report um, speed boards that have fallen over. So all of this could have sort of led to the, the driver's method of thinking there and thought process. And don't forget, the train's travelling at 125 miles an hour. You've got to go through this thought process and make your decisions very, very quickly. Um, I can see the trap here and... To be honest with you, I'm pretty sure that it's one that I could easily fall into and lots of other drivers could. But of course, that's the purpose of these reports, to learn from other people's mistakes and not your own. This isn't the first time this sort of incident's been reported either. There was a similar incident at a place called Sandy on the East Coast Main Line in um, 2018. Again, you can read the report about that on the RAIB website. So, is there an issue here? Maybe when a temporary or emergency speed is changed, maybe there should be some indication to the driver that it has been changed. Maybe there needs to be... Uh, an extra sign or maybe move the warning boards 100 foot further away from the commencement just to indicate there's something different. Some people are saying um, on some of the online forums that I've seen maybe if there's a differential speed and it goes to one speed rather than rather than just having the solid 20 you have 20 over 20 so you're still indicating both signs. So what do you think? Was the driver just simply being careless here or is there a process that possibly needs to change?